Hi, my name is Stephanie Lomelli, and today we're going to go over how to do custom impression trays for maxillary and mandibular complete dentures. We will go step by step going from the preliminary impression, what steps you need to do in order to prepare for your master impression. So initially when you have a cast, you're going to be starting with your preliminary impression. This is an already trimmed cast, but when you first have your class, it's going to be very uh, raw and large and you'll have to trim it down quite a bit. Now on this pre-trimmed cast, a few important features to take note of on this maxillary edentulous cast is you have here is your residual ridge. You have your rugae here, your median palatal suture, your incisive papilla will be right here. Now, in addition to that, you have the slope, the labial slope of the residual ridge, your buccal slopes of your residual ridge, and here is your vestibule. Now, within the vestibule, you have little mountains. Now, those are called frenulum. Okay, so here we have a roughly three millimeter flat area that is called your land area. All of these features are key features in developing your complete denture and being able to familiarize yourself with the terminology. Now, for this particular course, you're going to want to have the land area be roughly three millimeters, okay? Um, in some areas, it is larger just on this cast, but you wanna to try to get it as close as possible to three millimeters. So as you can see on this cast, we have it a lot closer, okay? So, um, Another key feature that you want to look for is that from the depth of your vestibule, so that's not the edge, but that's going at the very center where it's the deepest, you want it to be two millimeters thick. Um, and you want, if you are looking from the depth of the vestibule, so perhaps I can zoom it in you wanna be able to be two millimeters, right? So you also don't, you wanna hold it upright. You don't wanna slant, cause see how that looks closer to three? That really alters your perception. But if you look at it coming from this way, you can see that it's roughly two millimeters. So we're looking at the one millimeter mark and then the two millimeter mark disappears. Can you see that? Okay, now another thing that students commonly make an error on in addition to slanting is that they'll use the soft flexible ruler and if you look you can slant this any which way so it really alters your perception of how deep and what happens when you do that you end up with really really shallow vestibule okay um let's see if i have an example so you can see here it's almost blown out a bit, okay? Um, another reason you wanna have um, thicker areas is because they can tend to fracture, okay? Now, with that, the main reason you want it to be two millimeters in thickness is because on our next step, when you do record bases, you'll have to cure it, just as you cure the custom impression trays. All of the steps that we'll be doing today will translate seemingly, uh, seamlessly to the next step in doing record bases. In fact, the materials that we'll be using are almost exactly alike. The only difference is that one of the materials, shown here, is clear. So we have a clear material here, okay? Now, when you take that apart, anytime you're not using it, you wanna keep it in the bag, because it does cure. And 
The other material for the second step, or your second test, will be pink. And so this is supposed to simulate what a denture base will look like. So as you can see, very similar materials. Test one, test two. Okay, so mastering, if you are able to master your custom impression trace today, you'll be able to do exceptionally well on your record bases on next test. Now, just to give you an idea of what those record bases will look like, so those will come all the way to the edge, as opposed to today's, where we'll be going slightly short. Okay, so key differences to make note of. So for here, you want to make sure that you are two millimeters higher than the vestibule. Now, when you do that, we can come over here and we're going to make markings, okay? Now, keep in mind, on the test, you're going to have to be doing this quite fast. Speed is gonna be a major issue here. So, one way to think about it is you have key features here. The frenula that you have to be high around. So if you choose dots at each height, so right in front at the height of it and right on the side, and you do that to each one, you can also add a few dots in the middle. And then you can connect them. Right, so we're all developing our hand skills. So being able to connect the dots rather than making continuous hash marks, which people commonly do, um, and it wastes a lot of time. So by placing only a few markers, you're able to save a significant amount of time. So I'll show you what that means. So here I'm placing it at the depth of the vestibule. And so you really have to eyeball it. So if you look at how I am, I'm coming down and I'm looking at it at eye level. Make sure to do your yoga poses because <laughs> you're gonna need to incorporate a little flexibility at this point, right? So I'm putting my mark right on the outer limit. I'm gonna come and put my mark, holding it at the very height, two millimeters. Okay. And then I'm gonna come to the outer edge and mark it two millimeters. Okay, now this has a thin layer because we've already practiced on this several times. So it has a thin layer of MRA, so it might not mark as well. And then now I'm coming to the next frenula. Again, two millimeters. Two millimeters. And two millimeters. Okay. Now, see how slow it is just with me placing, all I placed is six, six marks, right? Imagine placing several, right? Very time consuming, okay? But even with these, now, so we have these six, you can place an additional two here. Okay, and so what that will allow you to do is to essentially, Maybe a little challenging with the MRA. Essentially freehand it. Now, you hear how I'm saying it's a little challenging with the MRA, which is why it's essential that this is your very first step. Once you put the MRA, it will be extremely challenging, if not um, impossible, to be able to do your pencil mark. Your pencil mark will just wipe off, okay? Um, so we're just going to freehand it. Now, understandable that maybe on your test you're not going to be able to do this right off the bat, but that's where practice comes into play. Okay. okay. You want to keep your marking as dark, but also as neat as possible. Okay. And then. Two. 
See how I'm applying very soft pressure? Almost doing like a tracing. Okay. And so you'll essentially continue that until you have something that looks about this way. Okay. And so for this example, I actually used this cast several times in live demos. So thank you for everybody who goes to the live demos of these, which are also very helpful. Um, so in this video demonstration, we'll use that the same cast. Now, one of the benefits of it being so dark is that once you place the triad material, can you see how you can see right through it? So you know exactly where your dark mark is, as opposed to when it is very lightly, it's a, it's a little bit harder to see. Okay, so maybe you don't need it as dark as this. This is only this dark really because I've used it for multiple demos. Okay, so maybe just ever so slightly darker than what's on here will be sufficient. Okay. Okay, so you'll do the two millimeters all the way around the facial and buckle surfaces. Now on the palatal, you will be going from wrapping around the maxillary tuberosities um, where the um, pterygo palatine notches and you'll be coming straight across from there. Now similar modifications will be made on the maxillary mandibular cast. So on the mandibular cast, a few key features. You have your residual ridge. Here you have the labial slope, your buccal shelf, okay, because it's flatter. You have your lingual slope, and this is gonna be considered your lingual sulcus, okay? And this will be your distal lingual, okay? Key. Um, terminology to be aware of. Now, when we're talking about the distolingual surface, you are going to be coming down at a 90 degree angle. Okay, do you see that? Coming straight down and straight across. Now, that's gonna be slightly different than your buckle shelf. Now for that, you'll be coming right about um, at a 45 degree angle into it and you're going to be see how I'm right at the depth of it Okay, so you're not gonna have that two millimeters up because it's a very very flat surface Okay, so you'll be right into it and once you add that two millimeters really that's gonna be adding the distance from the depth of the vestibule to the cheek Okay Okay, so we'll be using base plate wax for two particular things. One will be block out, the other relief wax. Now block out wax will go in any area where there is an undercut. So you want to think about it as any other area where essentially your custom impression tray or your record base would become trapped, essentially creating an area that would uh, not allow you to take off the tray or possibly break the master um, cast. Uh, so those areas tend to be on the blackout blockout wax specifically. Um, it will be on the labial surfaces, okay, um, and particularly prominent in some casts. So here will be the labial as well. Every cast will vary. Now relief wax will tend to go in areas where maybe the mucosa is a bit thinner. So you don't wanna put as much pressure in those areas. So allowing there to be a slight amount of wax will essentially simulate that pressure distribution that mucosa would create. So you wanna think about the areas that are very thin of mucosa uh, and very bony prominent. So that's going to be your retromolar pad here. Okay. And then on your maxillary, you're going to have your 
maxillary tuberosities here, your incisive papilla, your rugae here, as well as your median palatal suture. All very prominent bony areas. So another key thing about this wax is you want to put the absolute minimum that is necessary. So you want to be very conservative with this. The idea of a custom impression tray is you want to get as close and as tight of a fit as possible. So again, this is something that can be done very quickly. So a little, and we'll bring it down. You want to put it on the retromolar pad area, minimally, the labial slope, and you want to, most importantly, make sure that you don't cross over and put any onto the residual ridge crest. The same will be here, minimally on the labial, none on the residual, the crest of the residual ridge, incisive papilla, on the rugae, down the medium palatal suture, suture and on the min maxillary tuberosity. The next thing you want to do is apply model releasing agent or MRA. So grab a generous amount and start to apply it to one cast everywhere. Um, this first layer is definitely not a layer to be shy with it. You can wipe off any excess later. Okay. Now, after you apply a generous amount, you want to leave it so it'll air dry for two minutes. Now, during that two minute period, you can start on the opposite cast. So you want to constantly be jumping back and forth and doing them simultaneously. You'll end up saving a lot of time. Now, you'll let it air dry for two minutes. Okay, so I've already applied my second layer of MRA. For time purposes, I didn't include that. We always want to allow two minutes between each coat. Now, for this coat, you actually want it to be a very thin layer, so you can come back through and kind of wipe off any excess. Now, in this example, because I use this cast repeatedly for doing tutoring sessions on, the line is excessively black. There's an excessive amount of graphite there, so you'll see that it smears. Now, when you do this, it will smear to a degree, but not as much as it's smearing here because of the excessive amount of pencil that's on there. So just wipe off any excess. So you want it to be nice and slick, but keep in mind any extreme excess is just going to kind of cause bubbling so that's why you want to get rid of it okay so once we've done that the next step will be to apply the triad material okay. so have wiped off all excess 
hands kind of get a little goofy after a while. So it's good to have a paper towel so you're not constantly having to change your gloves so many times. Because then it'll be very difficult to open the bags. Okay. So when we do the maxillary cast, we're going to place an entire thickness of triad material on there. Now, key things to know. Triad material is roughly two, 2.5 millimeters thick. Now, you want the entire custom impression tray to be about two millimeters thick. So you want to minimally apply pressure here. Now when you apply pressure, you want to apply pressure first to the medium palatal suture. And then from there, you want to push outwards towards the ridge. Now what that's going to do is you're pushing any air bubbles that might get trapped, you're pushing them to the outer edge. So sealing it from the internal surface to the outer edge. Now there is two things to take note of. One, you don't want to trap air bubbles in, but you also don't want to apply too much pressure that you may get too thin. Okay, so if you see, I'm rolling my finger, so I'm rolling it to the outer edge, rolling it outwards, okay? So now we have the entire palette flat, and we are moving out over the ridge. Okay, so again, from the crest downwards. Crest down. I think this is a, a little bit of old. Sometimes it cracks. Um, and if that happens, you just kind of mush it together, okay? Now from the crest down. And do you see how with each time I'm doing that, I'm, I'm really pushing that air through. Now, if you have an air bubble trapped, you will see, see how it's nice and solid? But if you zoom in right there, you can see kind of a little gray spot. Okay, so that can happen. Now, if you find yourself in that situation, you can put a small puncture hole, and now we're just sealing it up, okay? And do you see how the and you have to make sure to rub it because you want to close that hole because you want absolutely no breaks in the MR and in, in the triad material because you want a full suction. Okay, so no other graying areas. Now once you've, and if you have applied minimal pressure, then you can be confident that you're going to be in about the two millimeter range. Now once you've done that, you can use a brand new 25 blade on a red handled surgical knife also known as the Bar Parker. And you want to make sure that your edges meet your outline. Okay. Now going just on the external surface. Right, so as you trim, you'll be able to get closer to your line. Try not to lift it up too much because you can incorporate air bubbles. Can you see that? And I'm just gliding. Following the frenula. And see with a nice brand new blade, cuts like butter. You'll notice a difference if you've done several practices and are using a dull blade. It kind of crumples. 
beneath the knife and it drags. So once you see that, you'll really come to appreciate a brand new knife. Okay, so again, your edges are gonna be slightly thicker, closer to the 2.5 millimeter. So you have a little wiggle room to kind of press everything down ever so slightly if you did cut slightly short. Okay. See how it's a little bit thicker, the lip is a little up. So we're just flattening everything out. Okay. Very minimally. Now from there, you can use a little of the MRA just to wet the instrument ever so slightly, not an excess amount. This is just gonna allow you to glide it along a little easier. And do you see how I'm using the back edge to kind of tuck it and push it? Okay, so this is gonna allow me to kind of smooth it up so it's no rough angles. Now you'll see some people who trim it after the fact. I find, you know, the beautiful thing about dentistry is there are many ways to do it, but I find that doing all of this ahead of time allows for their, um, you can either spend the time trimming or you can spend the time positioning it like I am now and I find that it saves a significant amount of time. And I've gone around the entire border once. Now I will put it in the triad machine for two minutes with the table spinning. And while that is cooking, I'm gonna jump to my mandibular. So again, being as efficient as possible with time. So we've already wipe the excess off on this one. Now, since there is the lingual area, you want to cut so that way you can spread it, spread out the triad. Now here, we'll go from the center again, but for the mandibular, the center is the residual ridge. So you will line your finger across soft, soft pressure. You don't want to make it too thin along the crest of the residual ridge. All the way to the retromolar pad. Now once you do that, you can in either direction that you prefer, downward motion. And you see how I'm kind of pushing even in with my nail a little bit because we want to get into that sulcus. Your lingual sulcus. Okay. And see, no air bubbles. So again, the same, moving downwards. Really getting into that. Again, no air bubbles. Now with your brand new blade. And if you want, you can even cut on a little bit further on the outer surface because you can always go back and do a second cut. You want to use your green handled knife to pop off 
the cast. Now this one came off easily because I had just popped it off actually. But yours won't come off that easily. Now once you have it off, you just want to put it right back on immediately. One of the ways that these can rock is if you play with it too much or you leave it off of the cast while it's still warm. Now your next step will be to make an 8 millimeter by 10 millimeter handle. <clears throat> So one way to do that is you can make one mark and you can measure your 10 millimeters, right? You can make another mark and mark your 8 millimeters, okay? Now the thickness of this is 2.5, right? So 2.5 times two, right? And we're about roughly a little bit more than the thickness. So we're at five now. So we're going to fold it once more. Okay. And so now we're at about 5.7. 7.5. Okay. So we're just over. So if you can look, looking down, can you see this? Bird's eye view. You can see that I'm just short of that line, right? And if you look here, you can see that I'm just over that line. So some things that you can do, right? We're just going to push it downwards. Now, pushing it down will make it shorter, but fatter. Okay. And notice how as I'm pushing it down, I'm holding it. Okay. So see how it looks a little bit more square? And I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay, and flip it again. We're just going to do this pretty much on all sides. It also will be compressing the material together. Okay. All right, so now what we can do is kind of see where we are, right? If we're, if you find that you are too fat, you can pull it, which will thin it out. If you find that you are too short, you can push it in, which will thicken it up. You can also push it downwards. So different ways, just understanding how you can manipulate triad material will allow you to um, do a lot with it very quickly. Okay, so see how I'm just kind of pulling it out. And if you look over, I'm right where I need to be, right? And then here, right about where I need to be. Now, again, no matter how perfect you make this now, it's going to change as you add it. Okay, because again, you're manipulating it. Now the key here is that it has to be right dead on the center of the crest of the residual ridge. Any lingual, that's a deduction. Any buckle, another deduction. Okay. So it's going to be essential that you try to get it right on the crest without manipulating it any or pushing it over to one side or the other. Okay. Now once you have it where you think you want it to be, you can come and cut off the handles. Yep. Okay. So once we're there, We're going to come over here and see with your red handled knife.
Be careful not to push it lingually though. So if you're nervous about that, you can even position it ever so slightly to the buckle. Okay, and see, now the next thing is it needs to have a concavity. So by pushing it in, now we're pushing it right back to where it needs to be, right? And see how I'm holding it? That's one way to do it. So it's easier to create the concavity prior to it setting rather than incorporating it after the fact. So do you see how it's forming just a little bit of a lip? It's where my finger was. Perfect concavity. Okay, see how it's flat there? We're just gonna continue it on. And then you can do the same. To the internal surface. And just kind of go back. Make sure you didn't distort it any. And kind of do the same thing this way. You can even use the back of your red handle knife. See, to kind of push it in. And see how I'm holding it and kind of pushing it over. Still doing exactly what my finger was doing a minute ago. You just want to create that concavity. Now the importance of the concavity is that it will allow you to have gripping when you're pulling it out of the mouth. Okay. Okay, some key features. You want to mark on your cast or be able to understand where the ascending portion of your maxillary tuberosity is. Now that's going to be your limit for your posterior teeth. Now essentially, the handle also is kind of simulating that um, where the teeth will be. Um, when you do the record bases, eventually you'll add wax to simulate where the handle is. Okay, so see how they're all kind of building on each other. Another key thing is you want to be able, so these end right at that point, and they are ending at a 45 degree angle. So I made that cut coming downwards, okay? Also, you'll want to come back around and make sure that you're about 10 millimeters. Okay, so I can see that I am. And then eight millimeters thick. Can you see how I'm eight millimeters there? Okay. And if you're ever so slightly short, you can correct that once it's hard. We're gonna put it in here. And you're okay, so when you're placing the mandibular. You're gonna kind of glide it up the retromolar pad, but then just like you ended the maxillary at a really, really specific point, as you can see on this cast, you wanna end the mandibular handle at about one half to two thirds the retromolar pad. Okay, so you can come over here and just glide along the flat surface and just come back on it. Same thing. Can you see? Gliding along the flat surface and just coming back like that. And then from there, it'll be the exact same steps as you did for the maxillary. Okay, so sometimes your burr will get all clogged up and this is in your expendables kit from your first year. Now you can use that to clean it off. 
after each time you're gonna get real dirty okay you always want to wear your protective equipment and eyeglasses okay so as you can see if you zoom in you'll see that there are little ridges even though I smoothed it there are still these little sharp ridges now when you put this in someone's mouth intraorally, that's gonna be very sharp to their soft mucosa, their soft gingiva, so you wanna trim that. Now you don't really wanna trim inside, to, cause that would distort it, but you wanna just trim on the edge. So you wanna think of it as, if you zoom in here, so say you have the two, the internal surface and the external surface right and the top is kind of rigidy you want to come through and flatten out get rid of that rigidness and then chop off the pointy corners right so we're going to go flat angled angled okay so i'm coming through it and you want to keep it moving really fast because the moment you stop it and you kind of or trimming in one section, then you'll end up cutting way too much off. So by keeping kind of fast motion, and this is called your palm thumb grass. So your thumb, so you're potato peeling it, okay? So I'm cutting kind of across. So see how I flatten it out now? So I, I did several swiping motions to flatten it out, but now you only need like one motion maybe two to take off those edges okay very minimally and now as i rub my finger across that it's very smooth you'll just do the same all the way around okay smooth that out so we've done the flat surface of it now i'm going back around I'm doing the front, and then there's any irregularities, and then the inner surface. Okay, and so you're just going to continue that all the way around for both your maxillary as well as your mandibular. Okay, so to be able to determine what your thickness is here, you can use your calipers to come across and measure the thickness of them. Okay, so just choose a few key areas and then you'll be evaluating where the first of the numbers are. So it looks like this is nine millimeters thick. So I'm a little thick. So you can come through and thin it up. And you also wanna see how tall you are. So if you find that you are a little high in some places, you can get just kinda come through and trim off the places that are high. And again, if you just kind of keep it moving, you'll create kind of this smooth surface, fast moving. Okay. As opposed to if you do it slowly, you'll have lots of ugly streaks, right? And to thin it out. See, it's very fast. Wiping motion. Now, the thing you want to be really careful of is that in doing this trimming, you haven't gotten rid of your little concavity, okay? If you have, or if you didn't put it there to begin with, one way to incorporate it is just to glide along. Okay. And can you see how I have incorporated a small concavity? So just gliding it. 
So some people, as I said, prefer to incorporate it, the major anatomical features afterwards. So that's how you would incorporate that concavity after the fact. And if you wanted to, you could even smooth up that little edge. So you're going very, very fast. Okay. And just repeat on the internal surface, the external surface, and then on the mandibular. Well, I hope this explanation of custom impression trace has helped you to gain a better understanding of how to do the lab work um, and how to pair that lab work with the manual that you've been issued. Now you can also check out my other videos that I have online, which include how to do border molding, overviews, record bases, occlusion rims, and interior setup. Thanks.